The anime game that I'm working on right now is like nothing else that's currently on the platform. For those of you that don't know, anime games are probably one of the most popular forms of games on Roblox and they're always on the front page and they're always generating the most amount of revenue. New anime games are basically put on the platform every single month and they're always holding a high level of active players. For those of you that don't know, I actually started working on an anime game about last year and I posted a video about it and on that video, I have a comment that has over 130 likes saying that they want me to finish the game that I started. One thing that I find very intriguing about the state of anime games on the platform is that they're all pretty much the same. You have anime vanguards that just released like basically a few weeks ago at the time of filming this, which is a carbon copy, basically the exact same thing as anime defenders and it's sitting at over 200,000 CCU which blows my mind because there's nothing new about it probably gonna get haters in the comments complaining about oh well there's so much fun and blah 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 but let's be realistic here they're all pretty much copies of each other and a lot of them are just cash grabs and don't really care about the community and that's what blows my mind is that people will continue to play these games no matter what so that being said this is exactly why I'm going to make an anime cash grab I'm joking, but I am going to be finishing the anime game that I already started. So for those of you that don't know, the anime game I made is actually inspired by a Steam game called Vampire Survivors. This game is so much fun, it's very addicting, and basically the whole entire premise is your goal is to survive. But the map is large enough that you can go around and collect different abilities and do like little mini side quests while you're trying to survive all of the endless rounds that are coming. There's a certain level of randomness when it comes to this game where every single time that you level up in the game, you get a random chance for the next ability and then you're just kind of stacking a bunch of abilities until it's just total chaos and you're shooting all sorts of different projectiles and it's just a whole lot of fun and it's very very addicting so how does that translate directly into roblox well this is the current state of anime frenzy so far it's actually pretty fun and i have all the core systems built out that being said, the reason why it was never finished and never published is because it has some real fundamental issues that I haven't managed to figure out. The main issue there is that people with less good devices or devices that have less CPU power just can't run the game. The game just crashes and it's just so much going on because of all the NPCs and AI running at once plus all the projectiles that is just way too much for crappy devices and it just completely destroys the game. So, although the game is fun, because of this fundamental issue, I was never able to really figure out how to fix that, and uh, it just never got released or finished. Another big issue with the game is that the UI is just atrocious. At the time, I did not know how to make proper UI, and it just looked disgusting. So, because of that, I need to go back and remake all the UI in the game and actually make it, you know, pleasant to the eyes. There were also some game design choices that were quite questionable that I got a lot of feedback on when I was still working on the game. For example, because of how Vampire Survivor works, basically all of the attacks are kind of automatic. You don't really control where you're attacking or how that works, which is fine for most of the attacks, but I want to change it so that your main weapon, you kind of point where it attacks to make it more engaging. Because of the fact that it, most of it's just kind of either shooting in random directions and stuff like that it makes it a little bit less fun so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make certain weapons actually go where the player is pointing or attacking the core game loop actually has uh, procedurally generated dungeons so a lot of the dungeons in the game are randomized so that makes it so that it's slightly more replayable and every single time you replay it's not going to be the same map which makes the game slightly more fun in my opinion I bring this up because another big part of the changes I want to make is actually improve the random maps so that they actually feel more unique every single time that you load in, making it a little bit more fun. There is a long list of other little things that need to be added, such as better VFX, better animations, and a whole lot of other just design and visual stuff. Another big one is actually doing the hub, because currently the hub actually kind of, I find it looks good, but it's not very Robloxy. So I'm going to need to change it so that it kind of follows the norms for anime games. For example, in anime games, there's like a queuing system. So basically you'll enter into this room, you'll select your map, you'll select the level, then you'll select the difficulty. And then if you want, you can play with friends. So multiplayer is actually not in the current state of the game. So that's one thing that I definitely want to add in the future. And then with this change, that'll just make it a whole lot easier. So currently how it works is your goal is just to survive. So basically you run around and you just try to avoid the enemies for as long as possible. While actually over time, the enemies get harder, they get more health, then there's different enemies that start showing up and then there's bosses, I think every five minutes. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to change that up. So instead of having bosses every five minutes and then the enemies progressing, I'm gonna have different levels and different difficulties to actually increase the replayability and make it slightly more fun for people to play the game and grind it out. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to get rid of 
of the endless mode, I'm probably just going to shift it so that it's going to be like an endless tower where it's going to follow the same progression where it just gets harder and harder for the longer that you last. And then I'm going to make world leaderboards associated to it to grind that out. So basically what you're going to have is you're going to have the core gameplay, which is basically, you know, easy, medium, hard, and then survive for five to 10 to 15 minutes. But then you're going to also have the endless tower mode, which will be with world leaderboards. So this brings me to the next topic, which is progression. So how does the progression actually work in the game? So there's two forms of, pro well, actually there's three forms of progression when you really think about it. You have the main player level that as you level up, you're going to get skill points. And then these skill points can be invested into different stats for your player themselves. Then you also have chests. So the chests will actually have different anime characters within them. And then these anime characters will give you abilities while you try and survive. As you can see on my right hand side, you have your anime characters. So as you increase your frenzy level, as you survive in the game, you'll be able to unlock your abilities. So basically what this does and the reason why there's like levels associated to it is just so that you don't have all the abilities and some of them are slightly OP right off the bat. So like you have abilities such as increasing your movement speed or attack abilities, like example, Naruto starts shooting Rasengans all around you. So it's just kind of a way to help with the progression of the game and help you beat up the bosses when you get to that level. I personally really like how it feels and it actually progresses really well and it feels rewarding when you finally unlock one of the abilities and then each character it has a different unlock level making there be like kind of like classes or strategies to which characters that you're bringing for certain maps that let's say are harder in the beginning or harder at the end. So on top of an ability, the anime characters will actually also increase your stats. So as I previously mentioned, you're going to increase your stats through skill points, but also these anime characters can kind of complement them. So let's say that you put all your skill points into health, you could possibly equip an anime character that has a lot of attack to kind of compensate for that. On top of having the anime characters, you also have weapons. So you can equip a weapon that will basically be your first attack or ability. So when you start the game, you're going to start with a basic attack and that basic attack is your weapon. So there's going to be more rare weapons and uh, different like types of things, but every single different attack in the game will be able to be collected as a weapon. And where how you get these weapons is by uh, finishing levels. So basically, there's going to be like randomized loot depending on your performance. So let's say you get an S tier performance. Well, you're going to have a higher likelihood of getting an S tier weapon. This sounds very complicated, but I promised you that it's really not. Basically, anime characters are your abilities and then the weapons are your basic attacks. Then the enemy characters or companions are collected through chests while all the weapons are collected through grinding or randomized loot at the end of matches. Similar to games like Anime Defenders, I will also be adding uh, character rerolls in terms of their tier because, you know, they're going to give different levels of stats. And then I will also probably be adding a, a shop or something similar to that so that you can kind of like buy weapons if you don't feel like grinding for them. If you guys have any suggestions in terms of abilities or attacks that you guys think would be cool to be in the game, I would love to hear them. So let me know in the comments down below. Also, those that join the Discord are going to be the ones that are going to be able to actually test the game first. Moving forward, my next video will probably be slightly more technical and actually diving into fixing the game itself. Besides that, thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time.